excuse me, I'm just here getting tan like a typical Californian. Welcome to Los Angeles. I'm Carolina Risotto. Today we're gonna be exploring the hot spots in LA, like Rodeo Drive, Hollywood, Sunset Strip, and more. And this is LA as a tourist. Full disclosure, I actually currently live in LA, so today I'm going to be the tourist and also the local, sharing some fun facts along the way, but don't be surprised then if I go from one extreme to the other. So I have this LA map, so this will get me around, and I was already robbed, because this was like $6. So let's try to find out where we are here. What's going on here? Okay. I think we are somewhere over here in Hollywood. It looks interesting, so let's go visit this mall. Our day as a tourist couldn't have started any better. We are right here next to El Capitan Theater, and we were asked to answer some questions to the Jimmy Kimmel Show, so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be made fun of because usually whatever questions people answer there, I would always get them wrong when I watch his show, so I can't wait to be made fun of as a tourist. For $320, spell Giannis Antetokounmpo. Y-A-N... Yes. I already messed up? Yeah, that sounds about right. Lesson number one is my five minutes as a tourist here. LA is really sunny. Make sure to bring your sunglasses. I'm gonna come in with some fun facts since I'm also the tour guide today. So this is the TCL Chinese Theater. It's a historical landmark and it was inspired by the Egyptian theater that was also built in this area. It fits around 900 people and it actually has one of the biggest screens I've ever seen. So if you have the opportunity, you should definitely watch a movie in there. Today it seems to be kind of closed. I think there might be an event or something going on, but this spot is known for like all of the footprints and handprints and signatures on the cement, obviously by celebrities. That's what Hollywood is all about. So one of the fun facts about the footprints and stuff on the cement is that it started off as an accident. Someone just like stepped on it, of course, from the, the people who were building it and stuff. And then they were like, this is a great idea. So this is what people do a lot. They try to put their foot in. Looks like I'm the same size as this person. Who is this? <laughs> their name is in Chinese, so. This is a famous Hollywood Walk of Fame. This actually started in the 1960s uh, with an actress called Joanne Woodward. Here's the catch. For you to have a star here, you need to be nominated by someone, anyone, but you need to pay for it. $50,000 for the ceremony and the installation of the star. What I don't get is there's a star right here for Snow White. How did she pay for this? I don't understand why everybody's like trying to get an Oscar when you can buy one right here. Look, they're like $10. This is a great deal. Fun fact about the Hollywood sign. It was actually built in 1923 and it was called Hollywood Land. It was originally used like for real estate advertising. Only in like 1949, they removed land and then it just said Hollywood. Isn't that crazy? It had nothing to do with movies whatsoever. It just became a, a landmark and a signature of the city. I'm really interested in your Ferrari. What's the deal here? It's up to you. It goes from 20 minutes to an hour. And for half an hour, it's about 150. 150, for, okay. Correct. And for an hour, it's about 190. Okay. Just for three people. Where do we go with the car? All the way to the Hollywood sign. That's really cool, guys. Oh my god. <laughs> you know where to find me. It will happen. I know where to find you. Just send me a DM on Instagram and I got you. Oh, cool. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. you guys take care, okay? Are these those jerks that ignored my high five? It's another night to drink and then forget. Madame Tussauds, it is like the wax museum. They also have this in New York City. So if you want to see your favorite celebrities up close, this is the place to go. It's a pretty cool spot. This is something I recommend. It's a fun, fun tourist attraction. Right now we're in our next destination, Sunset Strip which is right here in West Hollywood. It started being occupied a lot in like the 1920s. This area 
which was at the time unincorporated, it was legal to gamble. So all the rock stars and famous people started clubbing and living the nightlife right here. So WeHo is known for that stuff, but Sunset Strip has like this fabulous vibe to it. And as you can see, the huge billboards all over the streets. We're gonna walk around a little bit. It's a nice place for shopping, for eating, and a great neighborhood to live in. This is a really nice area. Very sophisticated, lots of businesses, restaurants. I also feel like I would be spending a lot of money here, which is not good. I love how this area just feels a little bit like smaller, you know, I feel like I'm in a small town. I like that. They have like a Brazilian restaurant over there. That's awesome. And the gay flag. Oh yeah, West Hollywood is known for the pride community. They do the pride parade here every year. If you don't want to do walking tour like me, you can go on one of those double-decker buses. Go around the whole city on the bus. They have specific spots for you to go to. If you don't have a car, that might be a good, a good way to go. Oh my god, guys. This is the Oppenheim group from Selling Sunset. From on Netflix. That's so cool. Their office is right here. This is also where they shoot the show. There's someone in there. <laughs> yeah? I was gonna peek and then I saw a shadow. Is it rude if I do that? Should I do that? It's just like the normal people. They're none of the, the people from the show, but there's like actual people working there. Nice. That's exciting. and richness. The Rodeo Drive Committee met up in 1977. They said, let's make it happen. That's when they opened their first high-end store called Giorgio Beverly Hills. And then the following year, they opened Gucci. Let's go take a look and see what Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills is all about. Oh, and I did hear that this is where the celebrity shop as well. So maybe we'll find somebody. Place smells like money you know if you want to know if someone's rich look at their shoes I feel like that's how they can tell if you're gonna shop or not so this spot right here was actually built in 1989 and it cost 130 million dollars in the currency at the time to make and they just wanted to have like another shopping center area to complement Rodeo Drive right here they want it like an European architecture style are these supposed to be emeralds? Esmeralda. That's a beautiful green. I love green. I can tell why tourists come here. It's very different from anywhere I've been to. It looks like a movie set. Look at this. Even like this lamp. This lamp is too clean. You know, if you were in Rome, right next to it, you would see like a, a condom vending machine. I have a YouTube video about that. You should check it out. So this is the Gucci store. And there's like a line of at least 10 people to get in. We just went into the Christian Dior store. We could not film anything inside in any of these stores, but a big part of the tourism here is to actually go inside the stores. So even if you have to wait a little bit, go in. I think they're doing the waits though because of COVID. You know, they're still like reopening the city slowly. So I think on a regular day, you'll be able to like get in without waiting in line, but it's totally worth it. So if you're in Beverly Hills, go inside the stores because the fashion is a work of art. Beverly Hills is also known for like the really, really expensive cars. So in addition to going into the stores, which are sort of like fashion museums, you should also do some car hunting. And people like showing off that they got money and they will speed at 30 miles per hour just so they can show the sound of their motor. Now, I never understood that, but it's a thing. So you definitely can do some just like See what I mean? You can definitely just stay here and look at nice cars. If you like cars, it's a place to do that. Take a look at this car. I think it just stays parked here together with this store. Custom cars. That's another thing they have a lot here in LA. People go all out, all colors. Really great, really cool. Welcome to San 
Santa Monica. Right now, we're at the pier, which is one of the most popular tourist attractions. Right over there, there's an amusement park, which people can actually go to. And this Ferris wheel is actually one of the very few, if not the only Ferris wheel, right by the ocean here in California. Otherwise, a historical fun fact, this pier was built in 1909. Let's explore a little bit this area. It's a fun place to visit if you're a tourist, for sure. You remember to wear sunscreen, oh my gosh. Let's go by the pier and have some fun. So the Santa Monica Pier is actually also where the Route 66 ends, which is a highway that starts in Chicago. So this is the end point, and apparently it's a big deal in the United States. From what I heard, there's like 8 million people who visit this place per year. 8 million! That's more than the population of some countries. Apparently, a lot of countries have less than 8 million citizens. Dumbass! One thing that's really common in Santa Monica that I've learned is that there's always live music going on. Live performers. As you can tell, there's a bunch of people playing at the same time. It's a mess, but it's a thing in Santa Monica. And this is the Pacific Park we're about to go. It's a good date spot, I think. This Ferris wheel is huge, and it looks like a really good time. I'm not gonna go on any of the rides today because we got stuff to do, but it seems like a cute place to go, you know? Like in Brazil, it's not common to have these small little amusement parks. So I think it's a really cool thing about like America. I like the energy, I like the vibe. It feels very original, and it's crazy that we're still in LA. This is still LA County. Like there's just so much diversity here, so much to do as a tourist you gotta come to the Santa Monica Pier. This is a historical landmark in the area and there is no other place in LA like this whatsoever. There are other piers, but nothing with like an amusement park on it. And then it's right next to the Third Street Promenade, which is like uh, an open shopping center. So you, if you wanna go shopping, if you wanna eat, everything's walking distant and close by. It's really great. So there's actually a full video about Santa Monica on my YouTube channel, which you can check out. So I go into a little more detail and I give some local tips because we're living in illusion today. You know, I'm not really a tourist. I think I already made that clear, but we are. So back into character. I love LA. Now let's go to our final destination, Abikini. <music> at Abikini in Venice. This city of Venice was founded in the 20th century by a man named Abikini who worked in the tobacco industry. He actually fell in love with Venice in Italy and tried to recreate, you know, the Pacific version of that. So here we are. This was once voted by GQ magazine the coolest block in America. So I have high expectations right now. It's known for trendy shops, restaurants, and actually a lot of celebrities live or have lived here at some point, like Robert Downey Jr., Julia Roberts, and even Nicolas Cage. I already can tell it has a lot of personality and it's very different from the other places we visited today. And this is gonna be our last stop, so let's get right to it. All right, so I already found my first victim here, this store called Birdies. It's very cute. It has so much personality. This is so different. It's like a little carnaval on your foot. the simplicity and charm of it and they seem really comfortable and they're just really pretty and they're not like anything I have so Nossa, é muito it feels like pillow cushions on my foot I swear yeah. that's what it feels like yeah they were telling me that these shoes are perfect for traveling because they're foldable they're super light they're machine washable and you can even just take out the sole and wash it as well so usually I'm a six and a half but I think on this store I'm a seven so maybe try to get half a size up but really cute, I just love the models and the diversity of the store. So we're here at the Buena Planta and it's a really cute pop-up restaurant slash bar in Venice, Abikini. Even though it's a pop-up, it's been here for over a year and I think it's working out so well. They told me they're extending their stay, so I don't know for how long, but it's really, really nice. And I personally really want to sit down later here and grab a drink. It represents a lot of what Venice is laid back but still with a bit of sophistication and a lot of art you know venice is known for its art community so just look at this beautiful wall so we were just walking around Abikini, enjoying ourselves in the la sunshine and then we bump into this other store called suit supply they create a laid-back environment where you can just chill and shop and it's like 
If you want to just wait for your buddy who's shopping inside, there's this whole beautiful seating area right outside. And why does it work here in LA? Because it's always sunny. The weather is fantastic. Like it's sunny all year long. I can't believe it, but we just found a pop-up store of Farmi Rio, which is a store from my city, Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. They have been here since early summer and I guess they're gonna be here for a little while longer. I have to show it to you guys because it's so iconic. The fashion is really different from what you would usually see in LA. So as you can see here, the, the clothes are really colorful. Really, really colorful. This is just like so Brazil. We love wearing colors. This is something I would totally wear. This is so my vibe. $140 for a shirt. But this stuff lasts years. It's like really, really good quality clothing. Bikini. Wow, so charming. I love the stores. I love the people. Really nice. And the palm trees, such a vibe. Now I think it's time to end this day with a beautiful sunset at the beach and then go back home somehow uh, and talk about our final conclusions as our day as a tourist in LA. Oh my god, you guys, I cannot believe it. I survived a day as a tourist in LA. I'm exhausted. Just today, I went to five different cities. So much to see here, so many different activities, so many options for different tastes. I think it's impossible to visit LA and not like something. Now, I spent the whole day with a car, um, so I drove around the city and it was really important because I was able to set the rhythm of my day and kind of like be spontaneous about what I wanted to do when. Otherwise, I do feel like a big part of the tourist attraction in LA is sort of visiting the stores. When you're walking around the city, if you really want to know its character, go in the stores, you know, look at the clothes, the fashion, the art galleries and see how the trends are different depending on what part of LA you're in. In terms of safety, I felt pretty safe the whole time. As an overall review, my experience as a tourist here was really positive. I got to do a lot of different things, meet some new people. Everybody treated me well, including the locals. Like, I think sometimes maybe in other cities, people don't like tourists that much, but I feel like LA is a city that embraces their tourists. Now that we've experienced LA as a tourist, it's time to experience the city as a local. Stay tuned for my next video where we explore LA for a day with me, because I actually live here, remember? I'm gonna take you on a regular day in Los Angeles and you'll get to see what it really is like to live here. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Your support makes all the difference in the world to me and allows me to create more content. I'm Carolina Rizzotto and this was A Day as a Tourist in Los Angeles.